Hello, welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, and today we're going to cover a puzzle I never thought we'd do on the channel, actually. Uh, this is a version of Nonograms, which is a puzzle request that we get an awful lot, and in fact this was prompted by uh, an interaction I had on our Discord server just the other day, where someone asked, oh, please can we do a video on Nonograms, and I rather glibly said, oh, I don't think, I don't think it's quite the right thing to do. And I, then I got an email from Prasanna Sashadri saying, well, actually, there are some very difficult and interesting forms of nonograms called cross the streams, and you should probably have a look at those. So he sent me a couple of examples he thought would make good videos. And uh, I found this one as well, which is hopefully be, will be a slightly easier puzzle to get us into it. And we're going to have a look at these today. And this puzzle, in fact, on screen is by Grant Fikes. And Grant invented Cross the Streams. Now you might have come across nonograms under a variety of different names actually. They're called Pie Cross, Griddlers, Hanji, Pick a Picks, uh, a variety of things. Um, and this variation on it, it just makes it slightly more interesting. So I'll, I'll read the rules out in a second. A couple of things I want to mention first. I mean, the first is our Discord server, it keeps going from strength to strength. It's now got 3,200 members I think and there are channels for all sorts of things so we get a lot of emails saying oh please can you tell me where I can find a test solver for my puzzle or please can you help me refine my puzzle to make it better well there are you know there are literally hundreds of people on the server who are very willing to help and I definitely think you should check it out there's a link under the video obviously uh, if you want to find it uh, also, just to mention that on Patreon today, we have uh, released our Olympic Sudoku um, walkthrough video. Um, so that was our monthly reward puzzle for June, and now there's a video as well. So huge thanks to all of you who support the channel on Patreon. Mark and I are extremely grateful for the support. Um, now, let me read you the rules of this. In fact, I can show you an example puzzle as well. While we, I had to blow this image up, so I hope it's, hope it's visible. Um, but basically what the idea is, is we have to uh, shade cells to create a single orthogonally connected group of black cells. Um, actually, I'm just going to go back to my puzzle just to show you what I mean there. Um, so in normal nonograms, if this square was black, for example, it would be absolutely valid for it to be surrounded by green or cells or cells that were not black. That is not the case in Cross the Streams. We have to have a single orthogonally connected black region. So we cannot surround uh, a black cell completely with, uh, with green cells. Now the other uh, innovation here is that no two by two region can contain all black cells. So it's not, you aren't allowed to have this arrangement anywhere in the grid. You'd have to break it up somehow with a green cell. So no two by two black regions. And that, you know, that's a a rule that many of you will be familiar with if you try Nurikabi puzzles. Um, that is something that comes up all the time in that form. Um, now, what else have we got? Numbers outside the grid represent the groups of consecutive black cells in that row column in order, either from left to right or from top to bottom. So that's absolutely standard uh, nonogram logic. If we look at the first row here, for example, one, one, two, three, and we look at the answer, one, one, two, three. So that is completely normal. A question mark represents a single group of consecutive black cells whose size is unknown but cannot be zero. So let's have a look at row two here. We've got three question mark clues and you can see in the answer there are three consecutive or uh, three separate groups of black cells. But the question mark says we don't know the size of them and indeed here it looks like you've got a region of four and then two regions of size one. And then finally we've got an asterisk which represents any number of unknown groups of black cells. So the asterisk is essentially a wild card. So where you see an asterisk you don't actually know very much at all about what it means. So if we look at for example at column, whatever column that is, column nine here, it's just got an asterisk in it. And you can see actually that column turns out to have one, well, two black cell regions, one of size one, one of size two. Um, so be careful with wild cards because they can, they can basically be anything. Um, right, let's go back to the puzzle. I wanted to do this puzzle first because nice thing about gmpuzzles.com 
which is obviously where these puzzles are from, uh, is that it gives you some time stamps, uh, some, some, some suggested times for uh, your level of solver, depending on how good you are. So this puzzle should take um, a grand master solver two minutes and an expert solver six minutes 30 seconds so it's it's it should be um it should be doable we'll have to see how long it takes me um given i'm talking through it but it, it shouldn't be monstrous the other puzzles the other two puzzles i hope to get through in the video are significantly harder so do have a go at the puzzles click on the link under the video to play as usual and with that let's get cracking um now so this you see this star this wild card thing here is is difficult because this five could start there but it could just as easily start here because the wild card could just be saying well nothing you know it, it's it could it could signify no black cell regions so in fact in this row we can't put anything in it's perfectly possible for that to be the run of black cells or that to be the run of black cells or something in between uh, three question mark question mark two though that must be yes there you go so this row is actually forced because the question marks must be at least a one cell region this is the only arrangement of black cells that will work with this clue so let's put green cells in between them question mark four three as well in a ten cell row you can see that's also going to be forced it's got to have two gaps um, and that given that this question mark must be at least of a value 1, 1 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 gaps is 10, so we can fill those in as well. This column has just one clue. It's a single 3 clue, no stars, no question marks to pollute it. So these, these simply have to be connected to one another and the whole of the rest of the row, or column I should say, turns green. Ah, now look at this. Look at this clue. Firstly, we've got to avoid a two by two region, so we've got to fill that one in with a green. And once we've done that, we just have a single question mark clue in this row. Well, that must correspond to that black region there. So the whole of the rest of this clue, this row, turns green. Oh, this is lovely. Now look. So what Grant's built into this is he's sort of hived off this black area from the rest of the grid. We've got to make sure it connects to its friends. So those have to turn black to connect it. And now this has to turn green to avoid a two by two region. Similarly over here, look, we've got to connect this region to this region now. It must look like that. And in doing that, we create two possible two by two regions, which we must avoid. This snake region here has to escape, so it's got to come up one further. These two regions have to escape as well. They've got to come up. Ah, the four clue look. We could still have a green cell here and then four cells up there that would account for this four clue. So we don't know that this is the four clue. And indeed, it probably isn't, but we'll come back to that in a second. Um, ah, one clue here on the right hand side of this row. Well that must correspond to that cell so that turns green. Extend the black cell. So one more. Oh and that that disambiguates this because there's now no longer any room to put a four cell black region above this. So this must be the four cell black region which means we get to place green cells like that. This clue is done. This clue is done. Sometimes it's worth noting in this form of um, puzzle, you know, when you've used a clue. Ah, okay, look, look at column one here. We've got a question mark at the bottom. Well, that must correspond to that region. And above that, we have a two cell region. So that must be a two cell region. And we mustn't create a two by two region. And this tetromino has to escape. So that must be black now. So hopefully you're, you're seeing that the addition of these little extra rules to the classic nonogram sort of paradigm is they really make the puzzle, they refresh it and make it more interesting. 
Now we've got to put five different regions in row four. One, two, three, four, five. So that that's this is now four. So once this cell at the end can't be a black cell region, we can actually that pattern is forced. These squares here must turn green. This has to escape. And that's a two cell region that completes this column. That must escape again. We've We've not put a three cell region in this column. There's only one place it can go. It's got to go there. So this must be a two cell region. Let's put the green in, put the green in to avoid this being a two cell region. And now this must escape to there. Oh, now look, we've got a four Oh no, that could still go either way actually. It could go up here or be connected down here. Ah, but this snake here has to connect to its friend. So it's going to have to come out orthogonally in two, two horizontal uh, moves to here. That does create a four cell region in this column. So that finish, we can't, there's no room for another four cell region. So this is the top of the column, this clue. So essentially this wild card here means that we have no clue what is to the left of the one. We know this is the one. So all of these rows are finished in terms of how much value we get from the clues. Ah, the five here is important, look, because we can't fit a five cell region in unless it's part of this region. So this has to be five cells long. That creates an opportunity for a two by two, which we must avoid. So this is the left hand five region. So all those turn green. This region mustn't be isolated. That turns black. This whole region at the bottom of the grid has to connect to this region. So this must turn black to allow that to happen. This is a star clue, of course, which is unhelpful. Um, we've done this, we've done all this. These are all useless. That's done. Ah, so okay, we've basically used all of the column clues. Oh, ah, okay, now look, look. If we were to try and put a black cell in any of those three white cells here, what the problem with that is we can't connect them to the rest of the black cells. So none of these can be a black cell. They all turn green. And now we've got three question marks in column in row two. How can we fill three different regions in? That's one. The only way is if those two are separate regions, this mustn't be isolated. This mustn't be isolated. Oh, and now we've got just, we still haven't done this clue in row one. Well, we can't put it here because that will then isolate it. So it must go there. And that's a one cell clue. So that finishes the puzzle. So this this is the correct configuration for Grant's, Grant's puzzle. That was beautiful. It was exactly what I was hoping for as well. It sort of demonstrated the additional logic that comes out of the question marks and the stars. So yeah, and unsurprisingly from the guy who invented the puzzle type, but a beautiful, beautiful puzzle. Now, let me find the next one. Hang on a sec, I have to pause, find it. Okay, so this puzzle is by Murat uh, Kantonta from Turkey. Um, now this has rather more stretching timestamps on it. Grandmaster time for this puzzle, four minutes. Expert time, 11 minutes. So this is going to be a lot more difficult, I suspect. Um, so let's get cracking on this one. Again, these fives surrounded by wild cards, not helpful. four and three in the same column that must be I must be able to get something from that so if the four starts at the top it would go to though it would take up these cells if the three starts at the bottom this would be green and we go one two three four so always these two squares are black 
Uh, we can pick up one cell from the three as well, can't we? Because if this is green, one, two, three, always takes us, it always takes that cell. And you can see if we start the three at the bottom, we also get to this square. So this cell is always in the three region. Ah, now look, this five clue has become important now because it's at the top of column two. So what if it was here? Would that be okay? Well, it wouldn't because these, these five cells would create a two by two black region. So this cell can't possibly be black and neither can this one for exactly the same reason and neither can this one for exactly the same reason. And now our five clue has become more useful because I've now got to fit five cells, not into 10 cells, but into only seven cells. So the middle three cells must now turn black. That forces this one to turn green to avoid a two by two region. Ah, this is part of the three. So that must come down. That we must avoid another two by two region. The five here is now forced. Look, avoid the two by two region. The four is forced. And there's no, look, there's nothing between the four and the three. So we can't put a black cell here, otherwise this would have to be indicated with four, one, three, and it's not. So this cell turns green. Uh, right, what do, ah, maybe this row. Because this black cell here can't be part of a region of size five because it's bounded on its right side. So again, we have to put five cells into a seven cell stretch and the middle three therefore are forced. Ha, and now we can continue this idea about not creating two by two regions. Look, we've got a four cell region on the right hand side of this row. What if it starts there? One, two, three, four, we get a two by two region. So it doesn't start there. Ditto there, it can't start there, it can't start there, it can't start here. So, ah, now, now it's interesting, isn't it? So this must be part of the four cell region because there's no other room in this row for a four cell region. So it must come to here, but it can't get to there. And it is the rightmost clue in this row. So this has to turn green. That's a two by two region if we fill it in. So make that green. Okay. Um, oh, we'll just use this clue now. This exact, it's the same trick. This is, I love this about Murat's puzzles. He so often has a theme to the logic. And you know you have to keep using that theme. Firstly, you have to spot it, but then you've got to keep using it. Now, can this square be a two be black? Well, no, because the top clue is a two cell clue. We're going to create two by twos, so we have to be careful. That can't be. That can't be. That can't be. That could be. Ah, but the four clue now again. If this isn't part of the four clue, the four clue must come this way. So these two are always going to be black cells because even if the four starts here, it always takes these two. <laughs> and now look at the five clue. So if the five clue in this row, it could quite easily start here in theory because the wild card could, could account for no regions at all. So if it starts here, have we got a problem? Well, yes, we do, because that's going to create two by two regions with these black cells. So the five doesn't start here. It doesn't start here. It doesn't start here. So the earliest the five clue can start is here. Now, if it starts here, that creates a six cell region. So it doesn't start here either. So in fact, this five region, five clue must correspond to these two cells therefore those two cells are also got to be black um, ah the two, two, two clue at the top of this column therefore is fixed we must bound it that creates a two by two region opportunity so let's put the green in there Um, 
Okay. What now? Now I am stuck. Ah, maybe this column. Yeah, we can get one digit in this column, look. The four clue can't fit into that gap, so it must be in this gap of seven cells, so the central part, central cell, must always be black, however we position this four clue. Ah, uh, it doesn't help, look. We just got wild card on the right hand side here, so this could be anything. So three clue isn't big enough to give us anything there. The two clue at the top of column one can't start here because if those two squares are black and then we have a green, these two black squares end up isolated. So that must be green, for the same reason that must be green. This could be black now because then it can connect to its friends. Ah, there's something interesting though. This little cell, can this square be black? And the answer is no, because if this square is black, there's no room for a two cell black region above this cell. So this has to be part of a two cell black region. But if it is, either it's going to take that cell and create a two by two region or this cell and create a two by two region. So this square is green. And that is a bit nice look in terms of this row, because we know somewhere in this row there is a two cell black region clue and to the right of it there is a one cell. And we haven't put the two in yet. So two of these three cells have to be black. So the middle one always has to be um, black therefore, because it's either going to be a that domino or that domino. Ah, look, the top of this column has to have a two clue. Well, it can't go there because that would then create a three cell region. So this cell is green. And now how do we make what's left into a two clue at the top? We can't connect this. That's a three cell region. So this must be black and must be bounded. That must avoid a two by two region. Where do we put a three region in row two? It must be there. That must be avoid a two by two region. Ah, look at that. This this column, it's, we've got to put two regions of size two in this column. But annoyingly, we don't have a clue where they go. They could That could be a two cell region, or we could have two two cell regions at the bottom of the grid. Uh, Oh, well this green cell here helps us out with row 3. Where does the 4 cell region go in this row? It's got to be there. That gives us another green. There's a 3 cell region at the top of column 9. It's got to be there. That creates another. That, that's beautiful because that this green cell here, to avoid the 2 by 2 region, fixes that this is the 4 and it comes down to those squares. That's got to be green. Oh, I've spotted something else actually in the top row now. Um, let's look at the top row. We've got to put a two cell region in the top row. We've not managed to do that yet. Could it go there? Well, no, that would create a two by two region again. So it's got to go there. Unfortunately, there could be a one in one of those because of the star clue. Oh, look at this as well. That's annoying. The top of this column, there's a three and then a one. But it's possible that the three goes downwards like that, or it could go upwards because there's a star at the top. So it's perfectly possible that they are two one cell clues. Um, right. So what now? I suppose in this row, look, we've got to put a one to the right of the two. So however we do that, this is always a one cell clue. There's no room for another one cell clue. So in, in effect, we've now completely used those two clues because of the wild cards beneath the three and the four. We They could be anything at all. Not use this, we've used that two clue. 
not done anything with this column, not done enough with this column. We've used that two clue. We've used the four and the three. We've used the five. Uh, we don't know yet about the two in this column. Okay, so we're now a bit stuck, or I'm at least a bit stuck. Let's have a look at this. Ah, the five clue here, look, we, we can extend this run of three one further because it's got to come to at least there. Oh, now this, believe it or not, that is quite an important cell because it does something for this row now. Is it possible that this is not part of this two clue? So if this cell is not part of this two clue, we've got to fit a two and a three clue in these this little run here. Well, that's it's possible to fit them in, but not without creating a two by two black region. Now, because this cell is black, so this cell has to be part of the two clue. That must go there. That means that's green to avoid a two by two region. And now we have to put a two in the top of column one. That's not two, so it's got to go above. Ah, and we can use the three now. Where does the three go in this row? Could it start here? Well, no, it can't because that's going to create two by two regions. So it doesn't start there. It doesn't start there for the same reason. It doesn't start there for the same reason. And now in this row, there's only one place for the three to go. And that's there. That creates a two by two opportunity, which we'll avoid. The three, the three at the top of this column uh, or nearly at the top of this column now can't be here because that would create a five region and there wouldn't be room for a three below it so it must be this region therefore that's green that fixes the two in this row look so that's green the fives fixed in the next row up that's green ah now look at this column that we've got to put two different two cell clues in here and there's no longer room at the bottom to put two in they have to be separated remember so one of these black regions must belong to a two cell region well it can't be the bottom one because that would create a three cell region if we make this black so it must be that one that must be green avoid the two by two region ah look at that we've got two ones in this column now so that that this is f that's effectively finished because there's wild cards on every every side of the ones uh, right so that must be black to make the five cell region that must be green we need a four in this one and now I need to finish off the twos in this column so those have both got to turn black and look these are not connected to the rest of the grid so they have to connect somehow and there's only one cell they can do it through it looks like it's creating our three cell region at the bottom look so that would mean that would have to be a one and that would have to be a black cell as well now does that finish it i've not done a that would have to be a two cell region to finish that clue Ah, no, hang on, that doesn't work because there's a... I've not done this one clue in this column. The one is beneath the three, so one of these two cells has to be a one. Right, that's quite awkward, isn't it? Um... Ah... So we've, we need to finish that clue, that clue, that clue, and that clue. I'm just going to colour those in. Um, now, this two clue, is it possible that this is of size two? Well, not, not now there's definitely a black square in one of those two positions, because if we make that black, uh, the black, the two clue here, that has to be green now. And we have to avoid the two by two and now we've totally isolated the right hand bottom right of the grid so anything we put in one of those two cells simply cannot connect to the rest of the grid so this is not 
the two cell black region. Ah, okay, I've, I think I've understood this now. So can this be a one cell black region? Well now, in order to connect to one of these two cells, this has to extend over to here at least. And look now, we haven't now got a three cell region in the bottom uh, row of the grid and we can't put one in. There's no room for it. So this square here is not a two cell region and it's not a one cell region. So it must be at least a three cell region. And now where do I put the two cell region in this row? It must go there. So that must be green to create the two cell region. That must be green to stop a two by two region. And now I, ah, now I need to connect this to here. So that's got to be all black. Avoid a two by two region. I've now got two three cell regions in the bottom row and I still haven't used the one clue. So I've used this one. I've done that one. So this must be the one clue. It must be bounded and then it has to connect to its friends. And that is how to solve Murat's puzzle. What a lovely, lovely puzzle. That was not easy. And this video is getting quite long now. And I know I am due at a Play-Doh tea party any moment now. Um, so what I might do is I might show you the last puzzle um, because this looks epic. Uh, this one here, this is by Serkan Urakli, who is I think he's now the managing editor over at gmpuzzles.com. So, um, you know, he, he's very important over there. Um, I'm a massive fan of gmpuzzles.com, by the way. It really is worth checking out their stuff. Um, now, do, yeah, I'll put the link under the video to this, but what I'll do is I'll probably put my solve of this up later on on Patreon for you guys who support the channel. Um, this one looks interesting doesn't it look there are no clues that are greater than size one um so yeah prasana's recommended this and the time stamps for this indicate it's probably hard gm oh the gm time actually is less than for murat's puzzle it's three minutes 30 but the expert time is longer it's 12 minutes 30 so i don't know what that means but anyway do have a go at it it looks lovely i can see actually I can see what you have to think about to start it just by staring at it now. Um, anyway, thanks very much for watching and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.